We're going to be talking about building your rental portfolio out of state. Rashul and Tarek from Cali, this is your show. Let's dive in. This is your show. This is the show where I work for you directly, taking your needs. I'm going through the MLS, and I'm trying to find the best possible deal for you guys. Put down 25%. That's the perfect way to buy this. That's why real estate investing is the greatest industry in the world. Hey, folks. Welcome to another episode of the MLS Search and Analysis Show. I'm James Wise. I'll be your host. And today, folks, I'm working with uh, Rashul and Tarek, investors from California, right? You guys recently purchased um, a 10-pack of videos from me, right? Folks, as you're watching this video and you're not Rashul and Tarek, a couple things I need you to know. Number one, this is not live, okay? When I sent this to them, I sent it to them privately. So the property I'm going to talk about today for them uh, it's not for you. You can't buy it. This deal's long gone. I release it publicly on Holton Wise TV when the dust settles. So if you want to work with me and my team, uh, you click the show notes below. But for now, just stay tuned and learn, right? Vershul, Tarek, you folks uh, purchased the 10-pack from us. This is the first video we're doing together. And uh, just, you know, let's go through a little bit about you guys, where you're at right now. You're hoping to add five doors to your portfolio every year. You have $75,000 in cash to start. Of course, you guys are working, uh, so you're able to continue uh, adding capital uh, capital to the reservoir, the, you know, the capital, uh, the vault of capital that you're utilizing in a real estate business, so to speak, right? So we could absolutely do that, and that's cool. Uh, with what we're doing with this 10-pack, right? That doesn't expire, right? So, uh, you know, the property you guys sent me today, it's a duplex, so that's two doors, right? So say this deal goes through, you only need to get another three this year, and then we're done for a while. So say we do it in like two to three videos, you got seven left for me. Uh, you guys just go ahead and bank those as long as you want, right? This is not a get-rich-quick scheme, guys. This is long-term real estate investing, so these packages, they don't expire. Holton Wise will be your boots-on-the-ground team long term so let's hit your goal let's get you to five doors this year then we'll stop wait till you've saved up enough new funds to fund the next uh investments and then we'll get we'll pick it back up when you're ready for the next investment right and before we even get into the property you guys sent me today though you, you guys also gave me some questions that i wanted to go through with you right so number one how profitable are rentals around the cleveland clinic as a nurse i know there are always demand for rentals by doctors nurses and even short-term rentals for patients who need to live close to the hospital for treatments uh okay you're talking about uh well there's a couple big uh big rental areas in Cleveland surrounding hospitals. Okay, we got the Cleveland Clinic, we got Metro Health, and uh, we got University Hospitals, okay? All of these hospitals, they're located in urban cores where the immediate areas around them are a little bit rough. So with the types of investments you guys are looking at and the price points you guys are looking at, uh, I would not ever anticipate you renting any of these properties to doctors or nurses that's not going to happen uh you know it's just not going to happen like the one you guys sent me today right it's a very nice duplex but that is you know definitely going to be levels below what doctors and nurses are going to be living in okay that's not going to happen um so I would never think to look at those, right? One of the hospital areas I tend to focus on the most right now is the area around Metro Health on the west side of Cleveland. It's a D-class neighborhood right now, but Metro has just committed to investing a billion dollars into that neighborhood. So what I like to do right now is pick up rentals very cheap, dirt cheap, uh, put Section 8 tenants in them, and uh, I'm banking on some appreciation in that particular neighborhood because just to the north of it, there's some other neighborhoods in Cleveland that have gentrified dramatically. Ohio City, Gordon Square, Tremont, things like that, right? Those are very, very nice neighborhoods, right? So of our big three hospitals in Cleveland, I like that one the best, um, but all of them, remember, you're still going to be working with lower income tenants, so you're never renting to doctors and nurses, okay? That's not going to go down. Uh, let's see. Number two, we would like to know any other strategies you can share 
that we can do to accelerate this thing? Can you discuss how to burr with hard money loans and how risky this is? Um, that's a good question. Sales at holdmice.com. If you need our list of lenders, send us an email. We'll send it to you. Uh, I don't think that's a good idea, though, to, to combine the burr strategy with hard money loans. First off, for anybody who doesn't know, burr, okay? Buy, renovate, rent, refinance, repeat, right? What that means is you buy a house that's all fucked up, right? You buy it, it's stressed, it's jacked up, you fix it, okay? Then you put a tenant in it, then you contact the lender, then you refinance the property. The idea is for the acquisition and the renovation to cost less than what the property appraises for. It's a very popular strategy. We could do several videos on that if you guys like. We do it quite a bit. Uh, but here's the thing. When you buy a rental property, you have to get a non-owner-occupied loan. Typically, what that's going to mean is you're going to put down 25%. The bank's going to loan you 75%, right? So if you buy a $100,000 investment, you're going to put down 25 k The bank's going to loan you $75,000. Now, when you do the Burr deal, I know there's people out there like coaching programs and like, uh, you know, just a bunch of fluff, right? They're telling you you could... Do the Burr deal where after you refinance it, you end up like making money. So like you end up with like $10,000 more than what you started with. That's not practical. That's not going to happen really. Anytime you do a Burr, if you end up with an investment, right? Say it's the same $100,000 value here, right? All right. So you have two scenarios. Scenario number one, you buy a $100,000 rental property with a loan up front. So you put down 25000 the bank loans you 75000 That's That's how you do it traditionally. A successful burr is going to be getting that same $100,000 value at the end of the day by having less than $25,000 into it, right? Don't let them think that uh, don't don't think that you're able to do this where you end up with like zero or like 10000 extra, right? So say, um, you know, you ended up doing a burr deal where you pay X for it and you spend X renovating it. And then they uh, refinance it at $100,000 value, so they give you back $75,000. If the cost for you to purchase it and renovate it was anything less than $75,000, then you're doing good. So say you bought something for thirty k and then you spent thirty k renovating it. That means you're all into that deal for sixty k and then it appraises for hundred k The bank will then loan you back seventy five. dollars right okay they loan you back 75 so you're only into the deal uh for the spread right which is 15k right which is ten thousand dollars less than if you just did it up front right because you would have had to put down 25k that's a successful burr and uh those uh types of things right it's that's very simple and easy math numbers, but like those are going to be more common where the spreads are a lot smaller. So uh, because of that, I, I don't think it's practical for you guys to think that you can go in, get a spread big enough uh, to afford to be able to pay a hard money lender's fees. Uh, I think that'll pretty much wipe out your spread. Are you a lender? If so, Holton Wise is looking to partner with you. If you're licensed in all 50 states, go to HoltonWise.com. Click the digital media tab to advertise on Holton Wise TV today. I mean, what what's that's not even like that practical too, by the way, where you're all in for 60 and it appraised for 100. That's a spread of like 40K, right? Uh, so like what, what what's going to be more common, right, is smaller spreads, maybe where the appraised value is like $15,000 more than what you got into it, $10,000, maybe 20, right? That's like what's going to be a more probable spread for you guys. Uh, so you're going to end up with like five, ten thousand dollars $10,000 less than if you just bought it up front, right? So if you're working with a hard money lender, that five or 10 K is just going to get wiped away. So I, I wouldn't even really think about that strategy, right? You guys have good jobs. Uh, what you need to do is continue working your good jobs, right? Yeah. You, you, know, you guys, you know, we got a nurse, right? You spent a lot of money 
I mean, my, I know how it is, right? My wife was a nurse, right? You spent a lot of money going to college, you spent a lot of money uh, doing that job. That's your skill set. That's what's important for you. That is uh, what you need to spend your time doing. You're not a professional house flipper or house renovator, right? So you're more efficient as a nurse. Save up your money and let's do... Uh, traditional deals like what you guys have found for me. This, you guys found me a hell of a deal for you. This is a great deal. We need to continue to replicate this deal. Be patient. Only try to fund five doors a year. Let's not get crazy and try to start like a whole active business with a lot of plates spinning and like super high risk stuff where, you know, if, if you make a mistake, it doesn't work out perfectly. You're losing your ass. So it is my recommendation that you do not even think about hard money lenders. You guys are set up well. Do your jobs, invest the proceeds safely, passively. And then the third question. We have 75K cash we can play with. However, is it doable to buy cash and then burr using half of the budget, give or take, and purchase with financing using the other half as down payment? I guess we kind of went over that in the previous uh, answer, right? I, I think you guys, I mean, we could do some burrs, right? Like the deal that you guys have sent me today, this is only going to take about thirty thousand dollars right a little less than 30 so you have 75k so what is that 40 50 60 70 so, so, so that's going to leave you if this deal goes through uh that we're going to be talking about in a minute if this deal goes through it's going to leave you guys with forty five thousand dollars to play with it's going to be very difficult to pull off a burr all cash for only forty five thousand i would say what you could do we could do this deal and if you're hell bent on doing another burr let's just have you save up for another few months and then come back to me and we'll try to do the burr when you have maybe like sixty-five to seventy thousand dollars to play with. When you're in the seventy thousand dollars to play with, that's a good range for us to pull off a burr, a cash burr. And uh, one of those neighborhoods that we would definitely want to identify for that would be what I talked about earlier, which would be uh, the neighborhood in the Metro Health area, right? The Clark Fulton neighborhood. We could probably pull off uh, multiple single family burrs uh, with you guys investing approximately sixty to sixty five thousand, maybe seventy if we need to, right? But a typical burr uh, that we pull off there that we pull off many times. Uh, is a purchase price around 30k, a reno around 30k, uh, give or take, right? So in all in, at approximately 60 to 65k, with uh, the appraised value being 75 or so, right? So there's that little, you know, five ten thousand dollars spread, right? Five to fifteen thousand, actually. Uh, that's about that spread, right? That is a burr that we could replicate. That's a burr you could do with cash, but you're going to need between sixty and seventy to do that, right? So that, if you're going to go with the burr strategy, that's probably what I would uh, think would be the best for you. Now, those questions aside, let's move on now and let's talk about the property you guys sent me. And I like this property for you guys. I like this property a lot better than you guys doing a bird deal, right? I don't like to see investors taking on unnecessary risks if they don't have to, especially when they have quality jobs and quality income like you guys do, right? Let's just keep it simple for now, at the very least. Uh, so I'm very happy that you guys sent me this deal. You guys are excited about it, as am I. 1524 East 204th Euclid just hit the market two days ago, and you guys are going to need to move fast because this thing is going to sell. Listed at 114900 absolutely nothing wrong with that price. We need to put in a full-priced offer. This is a nice freaking house. As far as the rents go, it's fully occupied. This thing's turnkey, baby. One tenant. Uh, in a 2-1, they're paying $750. The other one's in a 3-1, they're paying $900. So it brings in $1,650 or $19,800 a year. As far as with the listing agent, uh, it's listed by some people out of Keller Williams. Uh, they gave a pretty good write-up. It's pretty, uh, pretty nice. What we have is a great opportunity to own this fully occupied duplex that currently generates $1,650 in rent per month. 1,300 square foot main floor unit has three beds, one bath with classic wood beams and brick accent wall in the family room. Second floor unit has two beds, one bath. 816 square foot of space. The roof and plumbing are roughly five years old, and uh, the property will be city point of sale compliant prior to transfer. Real quick, pause. Pause the video. Click the show notes below. I got a video that explains the point of sale. 
Uh, that's very important for you to understand, comprehend, if you're going to be investing in the Cleveland market. Point of sale. That's something you're going to deal with when you're buying, when you're selling. So watch that video uh, either right now as you've paused uh, or when you, know, when you finish this video. you got to watch that video, guys. If you're trying to invest in the Cleveland market, you need to know what the point of sale is because there's no scenario we don't deal with that quite often. Uh, but the fact that this one is going to come point of sale uh, compliant that is key for you guys that is awesome and then of course this whole write-up the biggest takeaways here are the roof and the plumbing roughly five years old guys the roof on this house is probably like a seven thousand dollar roof it's gonna last 30 years right so you don't have to worry about that bill for another 25 years right and dude I love what they did man this is this is a really nice house I'm like incredibly impressed uh, with the workmanship that they've put into this this building it's it's very very nice like that that's high end right that's a very nice high end look that's the accent while they're talking about with the beams like the kind of tenants you're getting uh, when, when you rent stuff that looks this nice. They're still not going to be doctors. They're still not going to be nurses, okay, guys? But they're going to be probably the highest quality tenants we can get for this type of budgeting. You got to remember, uh, I mean, I, I know a lot of people in California, right? You guys, you see some of the stuff in Cleveland, like, holy crap, you could buy thirty, forty, fifty thousand dollars $50,000 houses in Cleveland. You could buy duplexes for hundred k in Cleveland. Yeah, you can, but, like, I don't want you guys to think, like, everything in Cleveland is, like, super-duper cheap, right? Like, a doctor, they're, they're, a doctor in Cleveland, guys, they're still living in, like, 500, 600, 700, $2 million houses, right? Don't think that they're not, right? Nurses, they're probably living in houses that are anywhere between, like, two hundred fifty and $400,000. So I don't want you guys thinking that nurses are living in $50,000 singles or they're living in your duplex units. They're not, but... For the type of tenants that uh, we're working with in this budget, you're going to get the highest quality tenants with such a very nice property uh, like you guys see here. So I love this one. Another thing, they didn't even say this in the write-up, but you got nice updated electric right there. Okay, that's awesome. The electric is updated, right? There's the little laundry area for your tenants. Bada bing, bada boom. So as far as the home goes, price point, great. Great price point. No issues there. We need to come in and pay list price, I believe, because I think there's going to be multiple offers on this very quickly. And the reason being, it makes a hell of a lot of money, guys. Sixteen fifty comes in, taking all of our average uh, estimate expenses. Right, I believe it's going to cost approximately eight fifty five a month to operate this bad boy, leaving you guys with an average NOI of seven ninety five. And here's the cool thing, right? Repairs, maintenance, vacancy, and non-payment, CapEx, okay? We already know we got updated electrical. We already know we got a brand new roof, right? But I'm still having you guys save $984 a year for your CapEx, right? Why? Because I know in 25 years, you're going to have to do that $7,000 roof, right? But in 25 years, you will have saved approximately $25,000, right? So I don't count that as your NOI today, but no, that money comes to you guys. So this, this is a banger of a deal. And then, you know, your other stuff, right? Your repairs and your maintenance, 984 a year. You're probably not spending 984 every year. What you're doing is when you get a turnover, you're probably spending two, three, four grand, right? So if you got a nice high quality property like this with a nice accent wall, stuff like that, it's, it's higher end. This is a nice little B-class neighborhood, really close to Amazon. You know, one of the, the few areas where... Uh, the major employer is actually being helped by coronavirus, right? Coronavirus doesn't hurt Amazon. It's it's probably doubled or tripled the CEO of Amazon's um, net worth, right? Because everybody's buying stuff on Amazon right now. So it's a very safe investment, uh, and it's very, very nice. So I would say you're mitigating your turnover risk as much as you can, which also directly relates to your vacancy and non-payment, which is also 984. So this 9540 average profit it's probably actually gonna trend nicer than that for many years right and if you break that down folks that's an 8.3 cap and then you want to finance so 28,725 is all you're gonna need to put down that makes this an 18 percent cash on cash return and then remember that leaves you guys with approximately $45,000 to continue to play with this year. What I'd like to see you do is I'd probably like to see you take that $45,000 and try to replicate this deal again this year and then just go ahead and pause till you have enough money to continue to bang out deals like this. That's probably what I would do if I were you guys. Um, but 
if you want to take that 45k save it till you get about 60 65 maybe 70k and then come back to me and do some more of those uh lower end bird deals in the metro health area that's that's another option that's great as well but my preference would be to take this sucker down and then just try to replicate this you try to replicate this where you pick up two to three of these every year you guys are gonna be sitting pretty so that's my thoughts. It's your business. It's your money, though, so you tell me what you want to do. Just reply to this private email, and if you guys want to write the offer, we will do that. We'll get that over to the listing agent. We'll, of course, make a contingent on a third-party home inspection. We'll send an inspector in there on your behalf to make sure there's no major issues like structural problems, things of that nature. If issues come up, I'll negotiate uh, on your behalf with the sellers. In addition to that, you're also having the city inspected as well for that point of sale stuff. So we got a lot of safety precautions in place. Another safety precaution is the appraiser's going to look at this property as well, right? So, you know, you got three third-party people looking at this property on your behalf, plus myself, right? So this is a very, 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 very safe investment. That's why I'd pull a trigger if I were you. But, of course, your business... Uh, your choices, we could do whatever you want. Just let us know, and then um, you know we'll go from there. After uh, this video, I'll get your feedback on what you want to do, and then we will wait to hear from you to discuss how you guys would like to move forward on your next video and your next video, so on and so forth. That's all I've got for today's show, folks. All those new viewers out there who just stumbled upon Holton Wise TV this is the first time you ever watched us, do yourself a salad and smash! That subscribe button because Holton Wise TV is real estate investing made easy. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to Holton Wise TV for more financial information, education, and entertainment.